Alright folks, so in today's video we're going to build a 20 meter dipole and we're building it based around a ballon that I got from QRP guys. It's the one to one voltage ballon and you can see it right here and uh, that's the dipole built um, right now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the ballon together, we're going to cut the, cut the um, elements for the antenna and then we're going to go outside, we're going to run it up in the air and we're going to do some antenna testing with uh, Nano VNA Saver and then uh, we're going to try it out on the Zygu or Shigu G90. <clears throat> One thing I want to say is that this is more of a choke than a ballon from my perspective and uh, what I'm doing with it is hopefully reducing any common mode current or, um, or RFI that I may experience across my feed line. That was the reason for picking that particular uh, ballon or choke for this particular project. Now, I know some folks might say, well, Ape, you're supposed to use a current ballon, not a voltage ballon for that. Um, the current ballons work a little bit better. Um, and that may be true, but the one thing that I can say is that QRP guys didn't have a current ballon. So I went ahead and I bought this voltage ballon. Anyhow, um, if you like this video, go ahead, click the thumbs up, subscribe. It helps the uh, video become more discoverable and helps people like you find the content. It helps me out a little bit too. Um, if you have any questions, post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. And let's go ahead and get started. So uh, this is the website for QRPs. It's QRPGuys.com. And if you go here and look under the menu for antenna miscellaneous, you can click the 1 to 1 and 4 to 1 voltage balance. And uh, here you can see both of them. What I did was order the one to one ballon. It was a uh, 15 bucks, they're both 15 bucks. And uh, you can see here is the uh, finished product. Now mine didn't come with insulated wire like this. It came with enamel wire, uh, which is gonna be a little bit more difficult to strip, but uh, we should be able to figure that out. And then this is the PCB that comes with the, uh, with the kit. Doesn't look too complicated, right? Um, down here some more stuff. I can click on this link and it will take me to the one-to-one -one, uh, assembly manual. And so clicking on that, the first thing is they have a difficulty level meter here. Um, and this says easy, so we'll, we'll see how, uh, how easy it really is. Includes the parts list and uh, mine has all of this stuff. And then uh, when you come down through here, it shows you how to, how to wind the toroid and um, shows you how to connect the, the wires. Um, just basically walks through the, the process of assembly like here is the uh, hex nut uh, wing nut assembly and then how you anchor for stress relief your uh, legs of your antenna and then it has a handy uh, area down here for notes now for our ballon what we I'm sorry for our dipole what we decided is, is that we were going to do a 20 meter dipole so I took a look at the uh, US amateur radio bands this is provided by uh, our friends at ARRL. And uh, I'm just going to pick a center frequency. So we start at 14 and go to 14.350. Uh, and the center of that is 14.175. So I went over here to West Mountain Radio. And uh, here is their dipole calculator. It's a really handy uh, calculator. So I typed in the frequency, hit calculate, and it came out. I need a total antenna length of 33 feet, 0.2 inches. So each one of our elements is going to be 16 feet, uh, 6.1 inches. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut these for 16 feet, 8 inches. And that way I'll have uh, a little bit more antenna to play with, but I'll probably fold that last 2 inches or 1.9 inches uh, back on itself. All right, well, let's uh, get started with the build and see how that goes. So here's the kit that comes from QRP, guys. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look and see what we have. So the first thing is, is that we have a couple of zip ties that we're going to use to mount the toroid to the board. And then this is the PCB board itself. Um, looks pretty simple, right? It is going to require a little bit of soldering and uh, I'm not the best solder guy in town. And we'll see that a little bit later on in the video. It comes with a BNC coax connector, which is nice because it's small and it's lightweight. And then here's the toroid. I'm not exactly sure what the size or mix is on this thing. And I'm not going to assume. It comes with three separate strands, different colors, which is fantastic, of enamel wire. I really do wish it had come with uh, insulated wire to make it a little bit easier, but uh, we'll see how that goes. 
and then it comes with a big pile of associated mounting hardware but this should be pretty easy to figure out I'm not worried about it oh and then the last thing is is that we are going to use this gear IT speaker wire God willing that there's enough of it on this roll I think we're going to be okay but I'm not 100% sure so I just wanted to roll in a couple of shots from uh, from the build here the toroid is uh, is wrapped with the wire and um, it doesn't appear too bad. I used a Sharpie when scraping or, or sanding the enamel wire down. It held everything in place and made the job a little bit easier. Uh, before I did this, I decided I was going to go ahead and trim up the wires and then put the Sharpie back in. And I can tell you that cleaning the enamel off of those wires was a total pain. Uh, difficult, difficult, difficult. A nice blurry pick of everything mounted on the board except for the... Um, coax connector and then here's the finished product so what we're going to do now is we're going to do some video of the finished product and we're going to go ahead and run a test on it and see how well it uh, turned out this would be the uh, final build and I did have some of the enamel wire left over uh, I might need to use that on a different project but I can tell you I'm not looking forward to it and then uh, taking a look at this you can see that uh, we have everything mounted it's soldered in place we're going to take a look at my solder job uh, which isn't the best but uh, it, it all seems to work, and I did a uh, continuity test for everything with, uh, with a multimeter. So, uh, it, like I said, it's in working order, which seems to be nice. And then now uh, we mounted the bolts and the wing nuts on there. What I wanted to do is I wanted to test this out and just give me a sanity check before I went and uh, hung it up in a tree with an antenna and all that other stuff. So <clears throat> what we did, if you remember from one of the, one of the tests, is um, I wanted to put a 50 ohm resistor across it and then measure the impedance and I didn't have a 50 ohm resistor uh, so I took two of them and I wired them in parallel and that should give me 50 ohm resistance big shout out to Kyle AA0Z uh, for the idea of using the resistor alright with the resistors in place we're going to fire up the nano VNA and we're going to use that to get our impedance and SWR measurements and we're all connected up and I have to do some quick configuration uh, on the nano VNA so let me do that real quick you can see how easy it is to use the interface on the nano VNA so here you can see that marker number one in green on the Smith chart we are right above a 50 ohm impedance and it's slightly inductive and then down here the yellow line is our SWR so if I zoom in on the actual measurements you can see that the SWR is reading 1 to 1.19 and our impedance is 52.2 ohms which isn't bad so let's cut some wire and build this antenna we were fortunate and had enough speaker wire to cut 16 feet and 8 inches remember that we were going to measure off 2 inches at the end and then we're going to fold that back just doing some prep work and removing the terminal uh, plastic parts that I don't like. I did one of each for both sides of the antenna. The Ballon PCB has built-in strain relief. So I ran the wire through that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to strip and prepare this wire. I'm really a big fan of these uh, vice grip wire strippers. They work really well. Now when I initially stripped it, I definitely didn't strip enough off. Because the wire is such a fine gauge, I had to go back and strip a little bit more off and then fold it over. I also wanted to get a little bit of heat shrink tubing with adhesive lining prepared because I like to put that on the end of the termination. Now with the uh, wire folded over or doubled over I'm going to go ahead and crimp it down. And I really give this a good squeeze. Alright now that that's done you can see the smoke and ape soldering station. and It's a pretty crappy soldering iron that I've got there. So if anybody has any recommendations on a good kit to pick up, uh, post them below and let me know. Uh, I definitely need something a little bit better than this if I'm going to keep this up. And then now we're going to shrink the heat shrink. And 
And that job's easy enough. So here's the finished product in a big old bird's nest knot. I kind of don't like the way that strain relief works. I don't like the way that those termination points are doubled over like that. But uh, we'll see if it's a problem or not. Everything seems sturdy enough. And then here's the end I have doubled over. It's about two inches. You can see where I made the marking. And I just have zip ties on there for now. But uh, once I get the length right, I'll go ahead and I'll put heat shrink there as well. All right, now it's time to get this thing outside and up in the air. We're going to hook the Zygu or Shigu G90 up to it and see how it performs. So here we are out in the backyard and we are going to go over to the Gigaparts mask. It's a 34 uh, foot fiberglass pole. I use a coat hanger <laughs> at the end to attach the antenna and then there you can see it attached. We're going to raise this up to about 30, 30 feet, give or take, and uh, then we're going to do some readings and see how it does. But there's the finished product, an inverted V setup. On the back of the G90 radio, I also use a homemade uh, choke that is a T240-31 core with some coax wrapped around it 12 times, and I use this in addition to the, uh, to the ballon in order to reduce common mode current or RFI. So here we are in NOVNA Saver. If you want to learn how to use the software, I do have a video on it that uh, you may find helpful. Um, it should be linked below, but if not, you can just search my channel for Nano VNA. So what I've done here is I've done a sweep of the 20 meter band with a 25% buffer on either side, and the results are, uh, are pretty good. We did run through the calibration before anybody gets upset, but if you take a look at the start of the band, <clears throat> we're pretty dang close to a one-to-one, -one, and we're below 1.29 uh, all the way across the band. So this antenna is probably cut a little bit long. I don't know if I'm going to do anything about that. Uh, when I refold back the elements, uh, you remember I had the zip ties holding them down. I want to put some heat shrink on there. I might come back another inch or so, but uh, I'll have to think about that and decide. I'm actually really happy where this turned out, and um, I typically use the lower end of the, uh, of the band for digital modes anyway. So it's probably going to stay right as it is right now. I also want to mention that the height of the dipole can greatly impact your SWR settings, um, as well as the angle of the V in the inverted V, as well as the type of ground uh, that you're over. So again, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to cut this antenna or, or fold it back any further. So here is a SWR scan on the G90 itself. And as you can see, the results are uh, pretty similar to what we got earlier. So again, I'm pretty happy. Let's give it a listen. The antenna performs pretty well uh, from a receive standpoint. What I want to do now is I'm going to disconnect it from the G90 and I'm going to run it through my ICOM 7300 and hook up FT8. I want to get a map from PSK Reporter to see how well I'm getting out. Um, and it'd also be good to get some signal reports. 
the antenna, again, the Ballon is rated for 20 watts, but that's probably a 20 watt SSB. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the same rating for digital modes. When we go to the 7300, we are going to run at about 18 watts. With the two chokes in place, we're doing a pretty good job of reducing our noise floor, keeping any RFI or feedback out, and I'm pretty happy with that. Here you can see my PSK reporter map after about 15 minutes of uh, FT8. Um, it was a pretty productive session. I didn't, didn't stay on very long, but what I was able to do is get out and get my signal heard pretty well, and that's a pretty good reach all of North America and Europe, and uh, a couple down in South America and one over there on the coast of Australia. The QRP Guys kit was a fun project and I think I might have learned a thing or two putting it together. While I understand there are some limitations to this antenna, mainly the power level, uh, I'm glad I put it together. And that's going to wrap this one up folks. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. I really uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this video. Uh, thanks again.